How do you draw the Lewis structure for XeO3, xenon trioxide? Now, you've probably been taught at some point that the noble gases don't bond. And generally, that's true, but we can force them to bond in a chemistry lab. So you're just going to have to deal with this formula as is and get over the fact that that's weird. Now, I uh, also want to point out that both xenon and oxygen are non-metals. They come from the right-hand side of the staircase. And so when non-metals bond together, they form molecular compounds. It means they're going to share electrons. And I have a method to draw the Lewis structure for molecular compounds. First, you're going to count the total number of valence electrons that the atoms bring. Xenon in group 18 brings eight valence electrons with it. Oxygen in group 16 brings six electrons with it, but there are three of them, so don't forget to times by three. That's 18 plus eight is 26 electrons total. So far, so good. We're going to draw the central atom and the surrounding atoms with single bonds to start. Now there's three oxygens connected to a single xenon here. So xenon's going to go in the center and I'm going to put one, two, three oxygens around it. And I'm going to single bond them all to start with. Okay, still going well. Add lone pairs to complete the octets of the outer atoms until they are full. Now, each oxygen is going to need eight electrons around it. Oxygen does follow the octet rule all the time. And I'm going to be careful not to put 20, more than 26 electrons total, because that's all that I'm going to be allowed to deal with. I got two, four, six to start with. Follow me. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, I've completed the octets on all the oxygens. Each, elect each oxygen has eight electrons around it. They're stable and happy. Now, if you have extra electrons, we're going to put them onto the central atom. I do have extra electrons. In fact, I need 26 and I only have counted up to 24. So I'm going to jam a lone pair onto that central atom. Now I have 25, 26. That's the number of electrons that I need. Great. And then if I have an incomplete octet on the central atom, I'm going to move lone pairs into bonds. Now because xenon can have an expanded octet, I don't actually know yet if I want to make any double bonds. I'm going to use a thing called formal charge to figure out if I should. Formal charge is calculated by taking the number of electrons that the atom brought, that's eight for xenon, minus the number of dots that's around it, that's two, minus the number of lines that's around it, that's one, two, three. This is going to be an approximation for its approximate charge within the molecular compound. It's not an official charge, it's just some accounting we do to figure out if we can, um, if we can, if we want to form double and triple bonds here. Eight minus two minus three leaves me with three, positive three as a formal charge. That's very high. If we can alleviate that by moving electrons towards the xenon, we're going to. Now each oxygen, on the other hand, its formal charge is the number of electrons it brought, minus the number of dots, minus the number of lines, that's negative one. One hint for when you should move electrons into double bonds is if you're connecting something with a positive formal charge with a negative formal charge. Here we've got positive three, which is very attractive to, an, to a negatively charged oxygen here. I'm going to move this lone pair from the oxygen into a double bond. Now what that does is it alleviates the formal charge of negative one on this oxygen. Six minus four minus two is zero. So he doesn't have a formal charge anymore. And more importantly, we added a line here. So the formal charge on that xenon is now just plus two. 
But look, here's an oxygen with another formal charge of minus one. So let's move that here. It now has a formal charge of zero. And we added a line to the xenon. That xenon has a formal charge of plus one. Again, positive formal charge here, negative formal charge there is an invitation to move it into a double bond. That's another bond and it alleviates the formal charge to zero. Great. Now the formal charges don't have to be zero, but if you can make them all zero, you're supposed to. Now, I've really drawn a lot of stuff going on here. So let me just redraw that Lewis structure for you in another way, or rather without all the scratching things out. I've got a xenon double bonded to an oxygen here. I'm double bonded to another oxygen here. I'm double bonded to a third oxygen here, and I have a lone pair on it. Now that is the most grotesque violation of an octet rule that you've ever seen, but xenon is allowed to do that. Basically everything from phosphorus onward is allowed to have an expanded octet for electronic configuration reasons that in Ontario, you don't, in Canada, you don't learn until like grade 12 or something. You're just gonna have to trust that this is the true Lewis structure for XCO3. I'm proud of you for making it this far and learning about all the little intricacies going on here. But uh, I mean, you got what you came for, am I right? Yeah, I'm right. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.